There's a brand new video with Hugo Martin talking about the analysis and design of the brand new Doom Eternal Demons, and today we're going to look at them from an ultra nightmare perspective, talking strategy and predictions and different things I'll be taking to the game on March 20th. Let's put our thinking cap on, shall we? Not that one. Let's go. Now, although this video is focused on the new enemies, if you'd like one of the old that are addressed in this video, be sure to let me know in the comments below. But first, Whiplash. Man, this AI is uh, a real pain in the ass. I gotta be honest. All right, he starts it off saying, hey, this is a real pain, I've gotta be honest. So, I have some thoughts and feelings I'd like to talk about how this is gonna change it up from 2016 gameplay-wise on all levels, including Ultra Nightmare. Let's see what Hugo has to say first. So, he, she, he, so she's actually our first uh, female demon. Hugo, the summoner, and the spider mastermind would like to have a word with you, man. <laughs> I'm just playing. She, she's not entirely anatomically correct because we want to be able to use her in marketing images. Makes and sense. So, like, we had to just kind of keep things sort of nondescript. Gosh, look, let's well, look at this here. Really scary looking eyes. The mouth, uh, maybe there's a bite type of attack. Well, we'll see. She gets we'll down on the ground and she slithers around. And anything that, that gets the player to uh, take crosshairs off the center of the screen within reason if you ask the player to do that too much it's gonna get pretty annoying okay so that is absolutely true let's talk about why let me pull up some captions here all right in 2016 you have your main weapon rotation that you like to use i do it's the rocket super shotgun gauss and occasionally if it's a mancubus without siege mode especially the super shotgun you get in this field right you're looking dead ahead you're shooting in the enemies you're looking up down wherever you're comfortable with wherever you're aiming at you're going through your rotation going through your motions this is going to change that because not only now, like you have said, if you are going to be doing this, you're going to have to look down. You're going to go around. She's going to go around you. Situational awareness is going to be super key here because she's going to elude you from the other enemy. She's going to be a great distracting unit. And especially in Ultra Nightmare, you're going to need to focus and see, hey, where is she going? What is she doing? Let's talk a little bit more about why she's going to be a threat in addition to her movement. When she drops down to the ground, she slithers like a salamander across the That's floor. That's new and she tries to actually flank you and get That's behind new. you, then she'll pop up and rake you with her whips, which is a really devastating attack. Like the, the summoner. The point of this is because we know one of the, the elements of the fun zone is to get the player to move. Okay, so this is going to be a new movement aspect of the game. It's already showing. I did a video on aerial combat in Doom 2016, how it's going to be so much different, and this is going to even add more to it. So let's, let's, let's keep on. We know that this will make the player move. Believe me, you're going to track this thing as soon as it comes out. And she pushes the player hmm, around more okay. than anybody else. And anytime the player's moving like that, it just feels really good. Wow. And you're going to prioritize her, which is another one of the really important things. Like you of, said. Of the Doom Dance that makes it feel really good. So, it sounds like she's going to definitely be a distracting unit. and has a summoner-esque wave whip attack around behind you. So you're not only going to be looking at what's in front of you, you're going to be looking at what's behind you and where she's taking you. See, this is what's going to make it key, is that you really... <sighs> As he's going to say later, you focus on a main enemy, yes, but you have to have no tunnel vision. Like, if I'm watching the screen on 2016, I'm looking off to the side to see what is going on around me. I'm watching that imp in the corner of my monitor. Is he firing up a charge shot? Maybe just a regular shot. It's always keeping that situational awareness active, and even more so in this. And as we talk more about some of the future enemies, it's going to be even more evident of what they have planned. Oh, boy. <laughs> so she slithers across the floor. You're going to track her with your guns. She does kind of make you also hmm. use this is certain good. weapons because we think Listen of the weapons this. like tools. Good. And the AI are kind of like problems, and you want to bring the right tool uh, for the job, so to speak. This is important. Listen. So when she comes up, maybe you're using the shotguns or certain weapons, but you're yep. definitely probably going to switch to something that's, that's good for tracking something okay. that moves really fast. Okay. Like he says there... Usually the super shotgun is a super versatile weapon in 2016, and you can even with the alt fire button narrow the cone so it is more powerful and has that more narrow scope to shoot down. So really, this is what they're doing. They're making a change away from relying on that super shotgun to be the main sort of thing. And we've seen this with the Mancubus, we've seen this now with the Whiplash. So what it looks like is what we're going to have to go Quake Lightning Gun approach. We're going to have to track her with the Plasma and try to follow and focus where she is. Something interesting about that, I was in Twitch stream, and Klockner, if you're watching this, hey bud, he made a note of the sensitivity with the plasma, so you're going to have to also be cognizant of your aim and where you're taking that plasma, tracking this enemy, and not just using something that's like point and click. 
even though this is a point and click adventure, right? So it's important to see what weapons work for the job. And it sounds like we're going to have to be aware of, hey, there's a whiplash on the field. This is where we need to go to. This is how we need to prioritize her and really think about where we're going to go with it. Now, this is really going to make challenge runs interesting because there are different mods and different weapons that have different utilities and functions of these different types of enemies. So if you take those away, you're taking away a key element of the gameplay design to take down these enemies. So this is going to be tough. I, I mean, straight up, this is not going to be easy. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. Uh, we have mods for that specifically. We have the microwave mod, for example, that can freeze nice. her in place and fry her. We've got the ice bomb that can freeze anything. So it's kind of purposely designed to steer, to, to Good. motivate the player to dabble and, 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 uh, in, in more mods and, and different attacks that maybe they haven't been using mm, up to that I point. I like that. I asked to talk about her because she Okay. So like he's saying, it's asking you to use more weapons because like, like I said earlier, you get stuck in that main rotation with 2016. And this is not a criticism of Doom 2016. This is going down as one of my all-time favorite games in the history of ever to me because there's so much more I'm going to go on a little rant here there's so much more that meets the eye and I think Eternal is going to double down on that what I mean is that a lot of people's criticism of 2016 and Hugo addresses this later is that it's all just arena battles I go into this arena it's the same 10 enemies over and over and yeah okay I get that I respect that opinion but when you really dive under the hood and you look at the enemy AI behavior why do they behave the way they do why is a pinky and a knight paired up with an imp? That is by design. These are crafted. These aren't just randomly thrown in enemies because you have that pressure unit that's coming after you and you have the range unit in the distance. The GDC 2018 talk expounded upon that. If you've not watched that, it's an amazing watch talking about the token system and the enemy AI bell curve. It's, it's great. But this enemy, I think, is going to be a mixture. It's going to be elusive, but it's also going to kind of pressure you. Not in the same way. It's tough. But as I was saying, there's so much more that meets the eye. When you really get into the enemy AI, the arena analysis, what are the trigger enemies? What do you need to kill to phase forward the fight? How much damage do you need to do to it? And what's the priority? There's so much that you have to consider in Ultra Nightmare and Challenge Runs that is just mind-boggling. And I don't know how this is going to expand upon that. So he's going to talk a little bit more about the AI. Let's listen to what he has to say. He knows a thing or two about the game. He's one of my favorite AI uh, in the game. It's really just a brand new chess piece for Doom Eternal, and I think it's gonna be a lot of people's favorite thing to uh, shoot and murder and glory kill. And Yes. And see, it's always a treat to listen to Hugo do interviews, because I, made, I posted a tweet on Twitter, and I said, uh, hey guys, I'm Hugo Martin, and today we're gonna to talk about how to make a ham sandwich. And then I said, number one trending on YouTube. He's a great interviewee, he really has a passion for the game. You can hear it, like I can hear it, man. So Hugo, if you're watching this, thank you. But he talks about one of the glory kills here and some of the homage that he pays. So let's, let's, let's take a look. And she has one of the best uh, glory Ouch. kills uh, in the game. Uh, if everybody remembers, I'm 43, Steven Seagal movies 30 here. from back in the day. They were awesome. Steven Seagal. Uh, now he's kind of maybe not so awesome, but he used to be awesome. He would always do this thing where he let's would like hyperextend bad guys' arms and just do awful things with their arms. Okay. So we, we had to put in like let's a students go glory kill. So there's one where you grab her arm, okay. you hyperextend it, the whatever this bone is called sticks out, and then you like shove it in the demon's head. It's pretty Ooh, awesome. Vicious. Uh, it's it's like one of my vicious. favorite glory kills. So I can't wait for you to see it. I can't wait to try it. All right, let's pause. <laughs> Concluding thoughts on Whiplash. Oh boy. <laughs> Like you said, the ice bomb and the different things. I'm, I'm going to miss the stun bomb. I'm assuming it's not in there from 2016. But I understand why it, it and the hologram are absolutely OP, as well as the instant siege and all that sort of thing we use in Ultra Nightmare Challenge Runs, 100%, all that stuff. Great addition. See, it's always nice when you can shake up the meta a little bit and add different methodologies to be able to approach the game with. It's not just, it is point and click, but it's not. I get it. And she's asking you to play the game differently and brings you into that fun zone that they talk about. And I appreciate that. I think that is impeccable game design. Even though I'm not a designer myself, it's going to be a fun fight. Next up, we're going to talk about the tentacles. And this is something we've never seen in 2016. It's definitely a different element to the gameplay and the combat. And I, you've seen a little bit in QuakeCon. Let, let's, let's see what Mr. Martin has to say. Tentacles. The tentacle uh, is one of the new AI in Doom. New is good. But it's actually, uh, we're pretty proud of this. It's Why not you really go? a full AI. Like, we have AI hmm. that do the craziest thing, and they traverse all over the place. This is actually kind of like pest level AI, like an ambient AI. All right, well, we have not seen this in 2016. He talks about all the flashy, crazy 
going everywhere movement, and now they're dialing it back in. We've talked about in speech technique, in music, on the Mick analysis video of the music we did. Check that out if you haven't already. Mick dropped us awesome insight. It's dynamics. If you have a song that goes fast, 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 90 miles per hour, kilometers per hour, whatever, if you're across the pond for me, while it loses its luster, it's like, yeah, this is heavy and fast. And as a metalhead, I love that. But when you can dial it back, when you can bring in that ambience, you really start to appreciate more the heavy and fast sections that the game brings you, both in music, both in sound design, in gameplay, everything. And I think that's what they're doing here. As he's going to say, they're looking for ways to get around, as he says a fair criticism, the arena elements of the game. He wants to have those incidental areas be more impactful and keep you just as busy as the regular areas in the arenas. Take it, Hugo. It was a fair criticism of Doom 2016 that it relied heavily on arena combat. And I love it. And we thought our arena combat was awesome and it's even better this time around. But we needed How? to do more to challenge the player How will you in do this? between the arenas. We needed to make sure that the time you spent between the huge fights was just as engaging as the huge fights were. Okay, I'll pause this here. This is something important too. He wants to keep the arenas as engaging as the incidental areas. And we're going to, we do this in 100%. You use those incidental areas to farm different things, your masteries. And I heard way back in QuakeCon that he said that's what these enemies will be used for. And that is great. The strategy is going to come down more to let's just not waste this little possessed zombie and let's figure out what resource can we take from him that we need in this point in time, what mastery can we make progress to, whatever it may be. So keeping those incidental areas varied and even more exciting has a lot more impact on gameplay than one might realize. Yes, we think of arenas, yes, we think of boss fights, but we cannot neglect these, especially in Doom Eternal. I'm not going to neglect them. Are you? I hope not. I hope not. Maybe even more so. Well, we developed uh, like a pest AI to help with that, uh -huh. which is the tentacle. Now, sometimes they're hiding underwater and you can't see them. That's scary. Sometimes they're in these wormholes that are kind of scattered throughout the level. Also scary. You can't really tell which wormhole they're going to pop up from. It's kind of like scary. Hole. And they give you a pretty good whack if you don't pay attention, but they kind of give you a chance to shoot them because there's like a little metagame in there. So the player has a window mm. to take them out before they get whacked. And it's fun. I think it keeps you on your toes. The, the main thing... Okay. Yes. Uh, they've said before, Ed Software, Hugo has said that the idea is to make it not as the Tricky Dog 11 on Twitch has in his emote. Blame the game. You don't want to do that. You don't want to feel like the game screwed you over, and that's good. You want to have that chance, that window of opportunity that you can react and you can say, hey, this is what I need to use for this situation, like the super shotgun, whatever it may be, and that is a good game design. I really think it is. So let's see what else he has to say about his perspective on the design of these tentacles. <laughs> As a, as a designer, is we really just want to keep you thinking. Good. I mean, that's kind of the whole point. Like, you could either just run through a hallway with without a concern, okay. or we could fill the hole, we could turn off the lights and fill the hallway with a bunch of wormholes. Love it. And that'll make that journey through that hallway just a little bit more uh, interesting. Engaging. Really kind of keep you on your toes. And that's really the goal with Doom Eternal is to make sure that we're engaging you in the experience uh, from beginning to end. All right, Hugo, I like that. Ooh, we, yep. gotta, we gotta pause for a minute before we talk about the Marauder. <laughs> They want to engage you from beginning to end, and, and Hugo has even said that that's a criticism he feels of 2016. By the time you hit the third act, unless you are doing like a no-upgrade run, you really start to feel overpowered, especially with the use of instant siege and that sort of thing. And using the weapons in ways that you may not think of on the surface, like the ballista. We will be using ballista boosting to also be a movement mechanic to go around the arena. There's just so much to consider and so much to do. And I think even a little incidental AI, a little pest AI, that can have more of an impact than we might think it does. Next up, the Marauder. What Hugo has to say about the Marauder is extremely interesting, and we need to talk about it. So let's listen in. Marauder. In Doom, you're going to be kind of leveled up like a martial artist. In the first yep. hour, you get your white belt. A couple hours in, you get a blue belt. You're going to work your way up. And at some point, you're going to become a black belt. Yep, and when you're the there, end. then the third act of the game, it's more about just showing off just how badass you can be. And the game is kind of okay, aware that like you have it. your black belt, and there is another black belt out there uh -oh. waiting to face you. You are Obi-Wan, and this is your Darth Maul, and you guys are going to have this awesome fight. I've never watched Star Wars, but I played some of the games, so yeah, let's do it. Uh, you're going to fight a couple times in the game, actually. Okay, this is good. He's going to hold you accountable. He's going to see just how good you are at the Doom Dance. And hmm. when he's there, he is definitely like a queen chess piece on the board. Why does that matter? Let's talk about it. 
it's a way to test everything you have learned up to this point. And really, when you get to this point in the game, I'm super curious. Because in 2016, there's a gentleman, you may have heard of him before, just probably, named Bite Me. And a long time ago, he advised me, when I first started playing the game more recently, at the end of 2018, he said, do pistol only. It will help you learn the AI and the mechanics and why they do what they do. And it has helped me immensely, which if you've not done that, you need to. Super helpful. So I wonder, if you go into the battle, I'm you know, if eternal not having a pistol or whatever it may be, of just dancing around, learning the mechanics and the AI and the hows and the whys, that will be so useful. And to hear what he is going to say next about the Marauder is really going to add even more strategy in. Hugo, take it away. Uh, and he is going to create a lot of openings, as I said, with the other guys for the pawns and the other chess pieces that have been out there that you've been kicking their butts the whole time. Mm, um, level up. So it makes for this really interesting up. meta where you're going to want to try to get rid of everybody else. Mm. Kind of like in a good Bruce Lee movie. When the Grandmaster comes out, you got to get rid of the white belts first. Mm. And then you can face the Grandmaster so that way you're not dealing with anything else. So, and that is. Ah, okay, so if we have a few fights, my prediction is that maybe he'll be more standalone at first, and then he'll come back with uh, friends or something later in the battle, if you want to call him friends, to kind of layer it in that you get used to the concept on, on the base level at first, and then you add different elements and different things. This 2016 does this, Eternal is definitely going to do this. You get familiar with the concept, you learn its base elements, and it's impact on the game and its applications and then you apply it to heavier and further level as you go i know this sounds like a whole bunch of like crazy talk but it makes sense it really does when you think about game design and how they're putting this together it really does and i'm curious to see how this other black belt will fare in itself it makes for a really dynamic combat encounter dynamic is so good. i don't really want to give away too much but hopefully, please give away more yeah it's intriguing enough to get you guys to dive into the lore that's why we do that we will stuff. be try to expand the doom universe he's awesome all right, so he talks about diving into the lore and learning more. Now, there is an old... Okay. There's an old John Carmack quote. I'll, I'll spare you the details sto about what a story in Doom game. You've probably heard it. Uh, this has evolved and advanced. I believe his position has changed in that the lore is there for you to take if you want it, to dive in Big Mac Davis style, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to, and that's the beauty of it. Like, it's there, you can take it if you want it, but you don't have to take it if you just like to rip and tear. I'm cur I have my questions about the lore, and I'm very curious on quite a few elements. I want to find those fiery flaming codex pages. Let's do it. Let's see. Let's see what else Hugo has to say about the Doom Hunter. This is a super interesting fight because it's taking something again in Doom that we've not seen in 2016. Well, we kind of have. We kind of. I'll, I'll let Hugo take it away from here. You'll see. Talking Doom about the Doom Hunter. Hunter. We, we try to find new ways to uh, uh, give the characters ways to move around, new, new, new approaches to locomotion, so that way it can make for uh, a little bit more variety on the battlefield. You know, I like we that. consider like what the player sees while they're scanning their targets, and if everybody situational has awareness two legs and runs around like a man, that's pretty lame. So that's why we have like the pinky who charges like a you know like pressure a unit, and uh, other characters who fly around. But the, unit. the Doom Hunter, he he floats around on like this hover tank. Okay, but before we go any further, okay, like he said, uh, he's talking about situational awareness here that I've addressed from an Ultra Nightmare perspective. He's saying that you don't just want the same thing. Like, okay, this enemy is here, point, click, point, click, point, click, in the not fun way. You have to figure all these different elements of attacks. Is this flying? Is this on the ground? Is this slow? Is this fast? Is it pressure? Is it range? What weapons do I want to use against all these things in the first place anyway? And the way they're approaching the Doom Hunter, I think, is very interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let you go talk for a minute, then, then I'll jump in again. And on his tank, he's got some of his strongest attacks that are that are on the tank, the sled that he actually rides on. Nice. And then he's got the upper part of him, which shoots like this cannon and has like a chainsaw. This is important. So what's really cool is that you could disable one of his weak points is you can actually disable his sled hmm. and make it so he can't use his primary attacks. Again, just like the Arachnotron, making him far less effective. Huge shout out to the AI. Okay. The Destructible Demon concept is great because not only are you watching and tracing your path, hopefully doing headshots, you have to consider different weak points on these enemies, when to disable them, when to prioritize them, what weapons to use. And it sounds like the Doom Hunter is probably going to be late game. And 
he's going to put all those to the... He will be the black belt of that element of the gameplay, whereas the Marauder has his own style, the Doom Hunter is going to be this style. And he mentions it in terms of phases. If you think about the Cyberdemon and the Guards from 2016, they are two-phase boss fights. And really, those phases are subdivided into little mini-phases, because as you whittle their HP down, they have different patterns and new attacks. The Guards are a great example of this, because on the first phase, when he gets about I don't know, a little over halfway down, he changes, he becomes more ranged. Actually, I advise people to get up close to him because the only melee attack he has at that point is a ground pound, like the Mancubus, and really getting close is how you avoid his ranged shots. Doesn't make sense, but it does. Like that little shark fin attack, I'm sure you've seen it, Guards Phase 1. Getting close is key to that. So it looks like this is going to be a multi-phase boss fight that is divided up into the fight itself without splitting it into different phases. You knock down the sled first, and then you get the upper range. But as Hugo is about to say, before I ramble too long, it's different from one to the other, and you have to change your process as you go. My team once again, because this stuff is super hard to this do. This is interesting. You, it's a kind of a two two stage battle. The first stage, you work to disable his sled. Mm -hmm. Once the sled is destroyed, he will actually pull himself off the sled and then hover around just his the upper half of him. And mm. then he kind of he completely changes. He goes from like a hover tank to like a hummingbird. He'll fly all around, That's scary. attacking you with his guns swiping you with his uh, chainsaw. It's really, really awesome Ooh. that uh, we just feel like it's it's so cool that through the course of battle, as you disable these weak points, you can completely mm. change the behavior of the AI, which is something we worked uh, extremely hard, uh, hard on. All right, wow. My takeaway is that you'll get rid of the first phase and then you have to adapt and change your, change your play style to deal with what he offers in the second phase. Pretty cool, pretty interesting. Next up, we're talking about the carcass, and there's a few things I'd really like to talk about this, because there's more to the carcass that meets the eye. Whether we realize it or not, it's going to change the way we think about the game. Not even clickbait here, because of his shield attack. And there are a few different levels I thought of as I got this idea earlier, so let, let's let's see. Carcass. Okay. Again, we're, we're comfortable with frustrating the player. Just so long as we have something to teach you, what we're doing is pushing you into... That's important. In the no clip interview he did, he said that when you're frustrated, you learn from those mistakes and you're able to apply the changes and how to fix them. In Ultra Nightmare, when you know we talk about it all the time in the Discord, it's important to learn why you died and how you can improve it and not feel like it's the game screwing you over. And it helps out a lot if you can really learn from that. It helped me out a lot, at least. ...to a more fun style of play, we promise. And we know that weapon switching yes. uh, and using a variety of different weapons yes, uh, it is. will help keep the game fresh for hours. So that way you're not just doing the same thing again and again. You're not going to play the game for very long if that's all you're doing. The rocket launch. So that's the thing, too, you want to think about is that the variety is the spice of death. As Doom 2016's achievement, cha I call it achievements, challenge, mission challenge says... And it changes things up. It really makes you think you can't just get in your motions anymore. It's not going to work. It's not going to fly. You're going to die. Sure, this time around is way stronger. Here's, here's balancing. Messes up tons of dudes. It also does a ton more uh, damage to the player. Self damage That's interesting. is way higher. <laughs> it's already a lot. It's a lot slower. High risk reward uh, gun. Just hmm. like in the original Doom, you kind of don't want to run around with it like it's a rifle or spam it, um, which is kind of what you could do in 2016, which wasn't awesome. You yes yes okay. Here's, here's what I'm thinking about. You have damage per second, as a Clash of Clans owner that I am, we look at this stuff there, damage per second and damage per hit. I'm curious how the DPS has changed. It sounds like it has raised up. Now, damage per second and damage per hit coincide together. You can have a really high damage per second or damage per hit, and that matters. Because if your DPS is high, but your DPH is also high and you can't hit, you know, what, you know, what, what of it? So, in this... And in 2016, you know, whenever you have a Berserk pack and you walk around, you don't want to have the rocket launcher out because you're pointing and clicking just that, 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 that over and over again. And when you come out of that Berserk, boom, you want to blow yourself up. So self-damage is already high. It's 105 in Nightmare in 2016, having the environmental level 2 of the suit upgrade. Very curious to see that. Now, I have a few levels of play I've figured out for the carcass. So let's listen to what Hugo has to say, and I will break down the three carcass levels of play. The carcass was designed specifically to take that gun uh, out of Ouch. your hands. So uh, he'll throw up this shield, this this electric shield right in front of your face. Watch this. And a lot of times for people who are Look at that relying blast. on the Ooh. rocket launcher a little too much, they'll actually uh, 
oh. it'll it'll blow the rocket up right in front of their face and kill the player. So as soon as you see the carcass Watch, and you see a shield pop up, you're going to switch away from your rocket launcher or or if you're skilled enough, you could just dance around and use your movement to be able to create opportunities to kill him with the rocket launcher. So we're not saying you have to hmm. not use the rocket launcher. We're just saying this AI specifically is designed to kind of try to make you think a bit more when you're using it. And thinking is really what we want you to do. Yes. Okay. So at the most basic level, your mindset's going to be, okay, carcass. He's going to throw his shield up. I need to switch to my plasma rifle, disable the shield, and resume, continue the combat. That's going to be the core thing that it wants you to do to the carcass. Take it up a notch. When you see that shield come up, you're like, all right, do I have my rocket launcher out? I need to be extremely careful of this. Let's switch to the plasma, take that out. Let's keep in mind what weapons you're using for the situation. And on the high level, the really fun part that's going to be hard to do in battle, we're going to take a look and we're going to do what we do in 2016 and say, all right, this carcass is in play. Let's watch his tails, his movement, because this game in 2016 no enemy will hit scan you. You have to dodge the hits and look at the AI to see what they're going to do next. It's a callback to retro games of old in that you can tell what enemy is going to do what and you can technically do a no damage run on Nightmare. I've done that with checkpoint loading at each death. It is possible. It's kind of tedious, but it's possible. So in knowing that, aside from the imp hit scan fastball attack that is in the code that's above my scope, we'll talk about that more in the comments if you want. I think that you'll be able to look at the carcass and say, all right, knowing what I know about this AI and how he behaves, as well as what else is on the battlefield, when will he put up a shield and where? Maybe it's more random happenstance, maybe not. I think, I'm predicting that there's going to be a motion that he does that he's going to do a shield. And like Hugo said, you can keep your rocket launcher out if you want. You just have to have the reaction time and the know-how to say, all right, I'm not just going to blindly fire this thing because I'm going to get wrecked and bodied if I do and keeping a look at everything else. Look, I mean, that's just like, look at this. This is insane. This is not going to be an easy game at all. This is, this is really tough. And more than anything else, because when you're thinking, you're engaged. Yes. And when you're not thinking, you're bored. And you'll go Love play it. something else. So at this point, man. What do you think about all of these new enemies? Do you want to see a breakdown of the old ones too? Let me Just let me know in the comments below. Let me know. If you want to see some live gameplay, follow me over on the Twitch channel. I think there is a lot in store. I'm very curious to actually see what Hugo would say about this video and, and some of his thoughts, on, his thoughts on my thoughts. Taking a look from the Ultra Nightmare Challenge Run perspective. And man, we've got a lot in store for us. My name is Austin. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the support on the Twitch, on the YouTube, on the Discord. If you've not seen some of the other videos I'm going to link up here, be sure to check them out. Very cool stuff. And I will see you next time.